If you play first base, you have one main job. Catch the ball to make the out. I absolutely cannot do the splits, but I can teach you how to break in your first baseman. Guys, like thousands of kids get a $300 glove every single year and botch the break-in process and just ruin the glove. It's literally making you a worse fielder. There's a common style of how a little leaguer breaks in their mitt and how a pro player breaks in their mitt. We're gonna talk about how to break the glove in and actually make it loose. More importantly, we're gonna talk about how to shape the actual glove. I'm even gonna teach you guys how to close the glove. Oh, Chris, you think we're so stupid. I've been playing baseball for five years. I know how to close the glove. Well, guess what? 88% of baseball players don't even know how to properly wear their own baseball glove. And I did just make up that stat, but you, you get the point. All right, we're actually gonna slow down a little bit. We need to talk about how to break in the glove. And I have a baseball and a five pound mallet. Honestly, I think the most important part is shaping the glove. But before we can do that, we need to have it so that it's actually loose enough to play catch, field ground balls, ordinary baseball stuff. So I've said this before, but we're gonna be focusing on the palm, the heel, and the pocket. I like to keep things as simple as possible so it's easier for you guys. Whether you have a mallet or a little five pound weight or even just a baseball and you're just holding it like this, softball works too. We need to just pound away and beat this glove senseless. So let me actually show you guys what matters. The first two things we need to focus on are the palm and the heel because there's just so much leather in there. We need to loosen it up as much as possible. We definitely need to be focusing on the heel here. So grabbing your mallet, whatever it is, and just pounding away. That's exactly what you need to do, but also focus going up and down the glove as well, pounding like this that's basically gonna be focusing on the palm and actually breaking everything and not just the front of the heel. Slowly inch the glove back and forth like this as you're pounding to break in all of that heel. So just to be clear, the fingertips up here are very stiff. They're supposed to be like that, so don't try to loosen it up or anything. On the other hand, the entire palm area, just go ham on it. Set the glove down like this and just go crazy. Simply continue to pound and hit the glove until you feel like you can pretty easily close your glove. Then we're gonna focus on that pocket. In case you didn't know, first base mitts are designed to have the deepest pocket out of any position. I would typically tell you that when you're breaking your pocket in, you want it to be underneath the web, but with a first baseman's mitt, it's actually a little bit higher just at the bottom of the web, not underneath. It's time to actually do the hard work of creating the pocket. So I'm gonna be smashing away right where we already said. Really all we're doing is forcing the leather to be used to having a ball right in the pocket. Grab whatever you're using and just pound away around it and even on top of the ball. Besides that, the only thing some people like to break in is this top part of the web here. You can do little things like rub back and forth like this, or if you want to use your mallet and just hit away like this, kind of like we do with the heel. I wouldn't focus too much on that. Like I said, palm, heel, pocket. That's what matters. That's what matters. Did my voice crack? I didn't even notice. All right, so I mentioned it before, but there's a common style among Little League kids and the pros. But there are some pros that do with the Little League style. Two hinges or with just one hinge. It's pretty simple. Two hinges has a hinge here and here, and it closes like this. One hinge is just like this. So when it comes to your actual hand, two hinges look something like this, and one hinge looks something like this. Now, when I said that I'm gonna teach you how to close your glove, this is what I'm talking about. The number one thing you do not want to do, don't take your thumb to your index finger. All that's gonna do is give you a really bad shape with your glove. Basically, it's gonna end up looking something like this. It's disgusting, it gives you a bad pocket, and you're just gonna end up being a little bit worse fielder because of it. You guys can still close it with one hinge, but instead of going up to your index finger, make your thumb reach your middle and ring finger, kinda like so. The ball simply needs to have enough room to sink into the glove. The one hinge style break-in is what I like to call Little League break-in, because that's basically what everyone in Little League does, because you just throw your glove in your bag and it looks like this, and it gets crushed by everything. And when you go back to put your glove on, it just has one hinge. As you're growing up, playing more baseball, starting to get into pro ball, single A, double A, triple A, people start to really care about how they break the glove in and making sure that they take care of it and don't just squish it in the bag. By going with two hinges, I think it does typically allow you to have a deeper pocket, but it's really up to you guys. You need to decide what you like more. If you guys saw last week's video, you saw me talking about how to close your glove. Same thing goes for the first basement. I would typically recommend not closing it like this this, like a snow cone, instead close it with like a claw. Typically you want your fingertips to meet. It allows for a deeper pocket and just a smoother glove, not a funnel that goes up and out. Like any other glove, you can flare the thumb and kind of the pinky. I'm gonna tell you the do's and don'ts. Flaring the thumb is kind of nice. Basically because it ends up being flush up against the fingers when you do flare it out a little bit. If I curl it back in, it ends up being a very awkward close because the tip of the thumb is just kind of butting up against the fingers. The main thing I wanna talk about 
is our fingers. A lot of people like to roll them super, super hard. And so if I curl it in a ton, when it comes to fielding a ground ball, you just increase your likelihood of hitting something off the butt of this. I personally like having it somewhere in the middle. The one thing I'm gonna say to never, ever, ever do is flare your fingers out, because that is not helping you whatsoever. If you're ever coming for a pick and your fingers are flared out like that, you're just increasing the likelihood of them to hit and kind of roll off. One thing that I cannot stress enough is just to take care of your glove. When you're going to put this away in your bag, don't just shove it underneath a bunch of stuff. Put it on top or just hold it in your hand. Speaking of your bag, you guys should go check out what's in my baseball bag. I have an absurd amount of gloves. My goal is pretty much to bring one for every single position. So go check it out. Oh, wait, hang on. If you've seen my videos before and you're not subscribed, just subscribe. Come on. Yeah, uh-huh. I play baseball.